Hello, I am Raluca Nekimish from EMEA Conferences. We discuss today with Luis Neto Galvao about data protection implications of processing health data of employees and business partners. Luis is a partner with um, SRS Legal, a large Portuguese law firm. Thank you, Luis, for accepting to have this interview. Thank you, Ramka, and good morning in Bucharest. Uh, we have three questions for you, and the first one is the following. Can the employers check an employee's information on body temperature, medical preconditions, and travel history? Well, uh, that is a, a problem that uh, you know, many jurisdictions have. Uh, in Europe, uh, with, the, with the GDPR, the processing of health data is, uh, as a rule, prohibited. So only if you have a, a strong reason, like uh, a law or a health authority telling you to process the data, uh, health data, then if you don't have that, you, you, you are not able to process such data. So uh, and that brings problems, obviously. But um, in relation to, to health data, uh, you uh, should only uh, process the data that you, you, you have a, an authorization, a legal authorization, or an uh, mandate, let's say, from the, the health authorities. If you don't do that, the strict answer would be no. Uh, if you are doing it all the same, I would advise that you do not collect the data. So if you're doing any measurement of temperature at the entrance of a factory or of an office, uh, collect the temperature or, or check the temperature, but don't register it anywhere. Uh, th that would be my, my advice. Is it different when we are talking about employees versus representatives of suppliers or customers uh, visiting uh, a company in terms of checking on the health data uh, and travel history? Well, it is different because, for instance, with employees, uh, if you ask for the consent to collect the, the, the temperature, uh, it is not considered to be a valid uh, uh, reason for processing health data. Uh, normally it should be, uh, consent is, uh, is actually a, a way of legitimizing uh, processing health data, but with employees, you're not, they're not considered to be in a totally fully independent situation because they are before their employer, uh, they have uh, a certain number of obligations, so it's not considered free and valid. And this is, uh, this is actually the opinion of uh, the EU uh, data protection authorities in, in general. They all consider that it's not valid. So you cannot use consent with employees, but you can use consent with visitors, with, with suppliers, with clients, uh, anybody who wishes to enter facilities. If you ask for their consent and you are sufficiently clear about what you're doing with the data and what data you are collecting, and you should collect minimum amounts of data for the, the processing in question, temperature, for instance, then it is valid. Can a company use track and trace apps to verify where employees or customers have been or uh, which is their health status? Well, uh, a company wouldn't be able to, to bear, do that on, on its own. I mean, the, the way these apps are being conceived, at least at European level, obviously we all know about the Chinese experience, the Singapore experience in Asia, there's different types of um, health applications uh, in different points of the world that are being used in Europe. Uh, the European Commission tried first to have um, uh, an application run by, uh, by the states, uh, centralized and where you know, the, the health data would be uh, used uh, all over Europe in order to allow, uh, to enable the free movement of people, of workers, um, and that is in itself a good um, objective, I think. But uh, for the time being, I think we have fragmented approaches to, to this application. So I don't think we have yet any hopes of having a European application, but we'll have national applications run by uh, the data, so by the, the health uh, 
the health authorities. And, and we have a number of common principles, privacy principles that should apply to, to these applications. First of all, privacy by design. They should be designed having privacy in mind. Uh, they should only collect minimum amounts of data for the, the purpose in question, and the purpose should be to prevent and, and to manage the uh, expansion of the pandemic, uh, to prevent people and know who has been infected. Um, and when you do that, you, uh, you should actually uh, have in mind uh, that, uh, you know, uh, location data, for instance, should, should not it should preferably not be used. You don't need necessarily to know where people have been uh, or with whom they have been. You need to know if they had a relevant contact with someone uh, who uh, you might have contaminated. So for that, uh, you know, we, the, the applications in discussion would use Bluetooth and they would just uh, collect the data of the contact, relevant contact with the person at a certain distance for a number of minutes. And uh, uh, and then you know with, with that you need also to have, have the health authorities involved to make sure that the person who was in contact is really um, uh, has been uh, um, infected uh, because there are consequences from that people will have to go on quarantine uh, of course it should be and this is universally uh, accepted it should be. Uh, it shouldn't be mandatory, it should be voluntary, which means that if you don't adhere to one of these applications, you shouldn't have any negative uh, consequences, you shouldn't suffer from it. And lastly, I think, obviously, health authorities should be very transparent about what they do with the data. They should eliminate the data once they don't need it. Uh, obviously, for research purposes, data should be anonymized. And uh, if I could add another two important um, questions or issues, I think these apps should be subject to uh, a privacy impact assessment, obviously. Mm -hmm. So this is mandatory from the, the GDPR. Uh, and being subject to a privacy impact assessment means that the national data protection authorities would have to be involved. So in relation to this, and you can consult it uh, because they are recent and they are relevant. You know, there's um, a, a, a guidance from the European Data Protection Board with all these principles, and which is very useful for any national authority who wishes to set up one of these apps. And there's also a, a very recent, so from the 24th of April, very recent opinion from the CNIL, which is the French Data Protection Authority, on the, the, the French project for a health application. Lastly, last but not the least, uh, each uh, health authority has uh, its mandatory uh, a data protection officer. And the data protection officer should be very active in relation to making sure that these uh, applications uh, uh, are complying with the, the, the legal requirements applicable to um, uh, you know, the processing of health data. So the role of a DPO is very important too and must not be forgotten. Thank you very much, Luis, for your answers. We hope to talk more in the future. Please keep in touch and follow us on EMEA Conferences website and YouTube. Have Thank a good you. Day. Thank you very much, Saluka. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.